Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kiriel and today you might want to get a drink, get a hot beverage, get a snack because we have got a lot of stuff to go through. I'm going to be going through all the products that I've tried throughout my videos and off camera and I'm going to spill some tea about the products that just didn't work out for me. The month of February is actually like a year anniversary for my channel so happy anniversary! <laughs> I can't believe I'm still going but I am <laughs> and I have quite a lot of things here. <laughs> These are things that I'm thinking about passing on someone else and getting rid of. Some of them I've just tried to use and they just don't work for my skin type, my skin tone. And there is a lot of that in this video. That's what I get for being pasty. But I have a lot of things here that I've tried and tested that really didn't work for me. And some things that I just would not recommend as a product as a whole. So we're going to begin into that today. Before we get right on into all of these crappy products, if you're just stopping by or if I've popped up in your feed a few times and you're like, who is this chick and why does she keep getting recommended to me? It's because I post videos every single Wednesday and Saturday on this channel. So I'm here every week, twice a week. I would super appreciate it if you click the little subscribe button so you join the channel. I love seeing all your comments and replying to you. If any of these products worked out for you then leave a comment down below or if you agree with me on these products and we're on the same wavelength then definitely you're my kind of person and I hope you subscribe to the channel or we can agree to disagree. I'll love you anyway. <laughs> but anyway enough jibber jabbing. This is gonna be a long one so let's get straight into it. <laughs> First thing that I've tried multiple times but I cannot use at all because it burns my eyes. <laughs> Which is funny because it's marketed as a gentle product. This is the Body Shop Chamomile Gentle Eye Makeup Remover. Do not put this anywhere near your eyes. <laughs> this literally made my eyes burn so badly. I've kept it just because I used it to remove like makeup swatches and things like that. But I just feel like it dries out the skin. I will not be using this again. I'm not even thinking about passing it on to anyone because I don't have sensitive skin, I don't have sensitive eyes, and if it's affecting me, I don't even want to think about what it would do to someone with a less resilient skin type than mine. So I just, I just really don't like this. And this is a no for me. I have three primers. I've got this Star Primer from Makeup Revolution. I tried this recently in a video in your time, but I have had this for a few weeks and I have been trying it. I just don't feel like it does anything to my skin and it smells real strong when you put it on. If I'm gonna use a primer, I prefer to feel like it's doing more than what this does. It just feels like a super absorbent moisturizer. I'd rather use my Smashbox primerizer. Granted that is more expensive, but this just doesn't really do anything for my skin. Also by Makeup Revolution is the under eye primer. This thing is just pointless. <laughs> I've tried it multiple times. It doesn't make any difference to my concealer. It doesn't really do anything to my under eye. It says hydrate. Personally, I don't find any difference when using this at all. I don't really feel like it hydrates my skin. I feel like when I use my Smashbox primer and put it a little bit more heavy handed under my eyes, that is better than this. So I just feel like it's a pointless product. And finally, we have one that's a little bit more pricey and it's the Too Faced Hangover X Primer. Everybody raves about this primer and I personally, for one, the smell of it is just gross. <laughs> Ugh. It smells of plastic coconut. And then it also has like a, like a dusty, smell as well. I don't know. <laughs> and this isn't an old product, so it's not like I've had this for ages. I hate, hate the smell of it. And obviously if it's going that close to your face, like you don't want it to actually revolt you when you put it on your face. And like on my skin, I just didn't feel like it did a lot. It kind of hydrates a little bit, but I prefer the Smashbox one. Also, whenever I go to use this, it's got that little like slug of like collected product in the actual pump and it's gross and I hate it. <laughs> and yeah, this just doesn't do anything for my skin. It works for other people with drier skin. So maybe if you've got dry skin, this will work for you. On to base products. Now I actually started this channel with base products. I've started a little playlist on my channel called Paler Shade because I am very fair and I always found that the paler shade of foundations usually were still too dark for me. Fortunately though, there's been a change in the makeup game and I have a lot of options now. So that is amazing, but also it's kind of destroyed the series that I really wanted to do on my channel. So thanks for taking away my content. <laughs> I'm joking, seriously, I'd rather have more shade options. But through that, I have tried a lot of foundations. Some of them 
were great and some of them were failed. So we're going, we're going through the things that I really did not like slash really didn't work for me. First one that just didn't work for me texture wise on my skin and also finish wise is the Revolution Pro Full Cover Camouflage Foundation. This was just a weird consistency for me. It's just like so thick. It was almost paint light. Also I got this in the same shade that I have all the other foundations. It was just so much darker. It feels very like sticky and like tacky. It's a weird consistency foundation and also it didn't set down so it was like this all over my skin and ugh. the coverage if I remember rightly wasn't even that good and it says full cover. I love Makeup Revolutions other foundations so I had high hopes for this one but it just didn't work out for me at all. Next is the NYX Control Drop Foundation. I liked this for a while and I did go back to it. It's very lightweight and buildable. I don't know what changed but I feel like it separates on my skin now and it really doesn't look good by the end of the day. I've got the shade Alabaster, which is the second lighter shade. I probably should have gone up to the lighter shade. It's just slightly orange. It dries down and oxidizes slightly. It's a very matte finish and I kind of prefer a more natural finish these days. I just feel like matte foundations make me look oilier throughout the day. It's weird because it's very watery, very liquidy, and then it really sets down to a matte finish. So in a way, I feel like it's sucking the hydration out of my skin. This one I just kind of fell out of love with. So two Maybelline foundations that did not work for me for shade and for finish. They were so out of the park for me. Is that the saying? Out of, out of the ballpark? Out of the... Not only are they too dark, but the undertone is way too orange. Like, I don't want to look like an umpa lumpa, you know what I mean? But as you can see, especially that bottom swatch there, that's the Superstay foundation. It just oxidizes like crazy. I end up looking orange. I really hated these on my skin. I know some people swear by these, and I know this is like a cult favorite. This did not make me matte at all. <laughs> I was looking like a friggin' oil slicks was just a hot mess on my skin. So this was a no. And also I bought this one because Soph Does Nails really liked it and a few other people really liked this foundation and said it was amazing. I went out to dinner in this, okay? And I had to say to my partner, okay, I've tried it out a new foundation. I look orange. He was like, yeah, I was going to say something, but I didn't want to offend you. <laughs> so when your partner notices and has to refrain from telling you the truth, you know it's bad, okay? <laughs> okay, this swatch is actually itching my hand too. That is not a good sign. What is going on right now? I did a full face of collection makeup and this wasn't bad, but I just don't find myself reaching for it. It's the Last Imperfection Foundation and they brought out a new pale shade, which is called Cool Ivory. Again, this one's orangey and it's too dark for my skin tone. The formula, it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't anything outstanding. Granted, it was only like four pound, but yeah, it just didn't make the cut. Mm, no. Who remembers this review? The Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation. Again, another one that just did not work for my skin. The shade on this actually wasn't too bad, but it's very pink tone. And yeah, it just didn't really work with the formula with this one. I bought this one because of Tati. Uh, she raves about this and says it's really good. But for me, it just didn't work on my skin type. Again, she has very different skin to me though. It's my own fault for my neck out and biting it. But if you do have a similar skin type to me, if you are combination to oily, then maybe you know, this might help you and sway you away from making the same mistakes. <laughs> this is a recent one that I've tried and I'm just saying no to. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Longwear Shaping Stick. I bought this because of Nicole Guerrero, I think. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. But she has oily skin and she likes a dewy look, which is mm, kind of my game. I do prefer a natural, but I like trying dewier products. But this, for one, the shade, it looks like it's gonna be all right but it's really not. I wore this when I had fake tan on and it looked okay then, but now I don't have anything and it would be orange. <laughs> I don't know, this is just thick and it feels like a traditional foundation stick. You'll know what I mean if you've tried a lot of foundation sticks back in the early days of makeup. It feels very thick, it feels very cake face, and it did not wear well at all on my skin. And then final foundation we have is the Fenty foundation. Now I regret to throw this out because this is pretty much an exact shade match for me as in my chest shade match. This is in 110 but god alive this is the maddest foundation I have ever tried in my life. Such a good shade. It pretty much matches my chest exactly and my undertones really well. It oxidizes a little bit darker than this but it's just such a good shade for me man. Like, look at that. Just find it kind of hard to work with. I've tried mixing it in with dewier foundations and I typically would use this to lighten other foundations that don't match, but it does affect the formula. So I 
gotta stop doing that. This one's just a little bit problematic for me, so again, this is going in the bye bye section. I have a few concealers that I'm not gonna be using again. The first one being this one by Collection, and it's the Face Base Concealer. This isn't a particularly bad product, but it just wasn't particularly good either. It's very hydrating, so if you have dehydrated under eyes, you might really like it. It's hydrating, but it's also very, very thick in consistency, and it stays quite tacky. I found when I set it, it went really cakey, and it would really collect the powder, especially in fine lines and things. Like, this was a no-go for me. As you can see, it's very very big toned and I prefer yellow tones so this just I'm not gonna use it and I don't like the finish so this is a going bye bye I really like this concealer but again it's just not my shade it's just too dark for me and it's the LA Girl Pro Concealer and this is in the shade porcelain which I believe is their paler shade it's a really good affordable concealer it's very thick but it's like a whipped consistency really but it blends out so well you see how orange that is it's way too dark for me uh, I would love it if they came up with a paler shade which I thought they did do not be fooled and do what I did I thought they had a white version turns out this is a highlighter so yeah looks like it's just gonna be a white concealer uh no it is not it actually has a bit of a shimmery sheen in it I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell but it's kind of like pearlized and when you put this underneath your eyes it does not really conceal anything in fact it highlights because it is a highlighter yeah, don't, don't think it's an actual concealer, people, don't do it. And the final concealer is a recent one that I've tried with you guys on this channel that I just really don't like. And it's the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer. And this is in the lighter shade, 320 Porcelain. Amazing shade range, such a good shade for me. But the finish on this is so drying underneath the eyes, it collects in all my fine lines, and it dries down so quickly. It doesn't blend in with any of my foundations very well. It really sits on top of the skin and kind of accentuates a lot of texture underneath my eye. I've tried using eye masks before I even use this. It just dries out my under eyes so much. I just really, really don't like it. I got it because it's such a good freaking shade. <laughs> Powder products, so I have a few here. Two are pressed and two are loose. I tried this one in a first impressions. It's the Laura Geller Baked Balance Brighten Foundation in Fair. Fair who? I don't know her because this is not fair. Actually looking at it like next to my face, it doesn't look that bad. It's kind of like a marbled effect and the darker tones just come through quite a lot. I've tried using this over bare skin. I've tried using it over foundation and it just doesn't really do a lot for me. And also it's too dark, so that's going bye-bye. Another one is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Powder. This is the paler shade and it's just very orangey. It darkens every single foundation that I put it on. The actual formula feels quite nice. It feels quite silky smooth, but I have better powders that don't darken my foundation. So this is, again, a no-go from me. I've got two kind of high-end loose powders, which didn't work for me. So the first one is another Too Faced product. I have no problems with Too Faced, okay? I just, these just didn't work for me. So this is the Born This Way powder, and it's just too dark for me. It seems smoothing. If this was like in a translucent, then that would be great. I'm pretty sure this only comes in one shade. So if this is supposed to be universal, it is lovable, but this just didn't work for my skin tone, so goodbye. And another one that didn't work with my skin tone, which I'm actually really sad about because I've heard a lot of good things about this. And it's the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. I thought this was gonna be okay because it looks so pale, but it darkens when it goes on my skin. It oxidizes. Really disappointed because it feels really finely milled and really lightweight, and it feels very soft, but yeah, it just didn't work for me sheen-wise. <laughs> Why am I so big? So since we're doing base, I'm gonna do highlighter. This one pains me a little bit. I think his lip products are amazing, but the Jeffree Star highlighter, I know this one's a little bit of a sensitive topic, okay, but I did buy it at the time where it was, you know, obviously okay. But this is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics highlighter. This is the one in collaboration with Manny, <coughs> RIP. Um, the formula of this is just so chunky. I just felt like I was putting like a layer of cement on top of my skin. Like it's just so chunky, but it looks so friggin' pretty. Even on my hand, it looks kind of textured. You can see like every single line on my hand. I may give this another go, I'm not gonna lie, because the actual sheen, like look at that, looks insane. It's just very chunky and like it even looks chunky by here. Maybe if I buff it out a little. I just feel like I shouldn't have to work that hard on a highlighter. I don't know, I don't reach for it. I've got cheaper alternatives that are really good on the skin. I may try it out a little bit more, 
because it's so beautiful. It's my only Jeffree Star face product and I just... Uh, mm. I did also just put the Jeffree Star highlighter on my body and it actually looks pretty good like on my shoulder. Like look at that. Look at that. So maybe I'll use it as a body highlight. I don't know. Clearly I have a problem. It's still in its packaging. Okay, that says a lot about this. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy highlight. <sighs> I can't make up my mind whether I want to get rid of this or not because it looks beautiful on the skin but it is too dark for me. I've tried it many a time. I can only use this with the lightest hand and when I do that it doesn't give the pop that I want for highlight. Formula was really nice. It was only the shade. It's very frustrating. Everyone can use it apart from me I feel. That's what I get for being pasty. I'm tempted to keep it for when I'm tan for like the summer and things because it is getting warmer in the UK but also I just feel like I'm just wasting product that's someone else can appreciate. I don't know. I don't know. What do I do with this? Leave your recommendations down below please because I am clearly struggling. Okay, I've got a brow product that's really random but this is by Sleek. I tried this a few times and oh my god, it's just so big. Oh my god. Calm down you. The product itself is really big. You can't really get a precise application with this and also it just kind of broke off when I used it. It also chunks up. I can't remember what this was called. The packaging's gone, obviously. Okay, let's talk eyeshadow palettes for a minute. I want to go through the ones that I just don't reach for and that I just don't feel like are worth the hype. And also some other ones that are just plain like rubbish. <laughs> I haven't actually tried these on my channel, but I've tried these in my personal life and I just needed to get the word out there and warn you guys. The first one is by Barry M. Now this isn't terrible it's just like so messy and flaky like i don't know if you're gonna be able to see the packaging it got everywhere the actual shades themselves they look amazing they feel okay i mean look at that they look incredible but on the eyelid they don't really come across that way as it is with a lot of products like this <clears throat> Herdy beauty but look how magical those shades look right there like whoo they look so pretty they are so crumbly. Try doing a neat look with these, I dare you. This is the Meteor Storm palette by Barry M. It's a duochrome metallic eyeshadow palette. Granted, the shades look friggin' amazing on my hand, but try and put that on your eyes. <laughs> I feel like this is about £10 and I don't feel like it's worth that. This one, oh my god. This is like the hottest mess I've ever tried in my life. This is the W7 Life's a Beach palette. They brought out a lot of eyeshadow palettes that look like this. They were supposed to be like Anastasia Beverly Hills, but I chose this one because it was a little bit different. It's got a few bright colours in there and also some nice metallics. I was actually super attracted to this blue shade here. I just really love the colour of it, but oh my god. This was the hottest mess I think I've ever tried in my life. For one, the pigment just wasn't that good. The mattes are really chalky. That's just like so ashy. I can even describe so powdery it's just insane but the worst thing about this was the metallics the blue one that i really liked clear sky can you you're not gonna be able to see that can you see it on my finger there how patchy that is it almost balls up bad like how did you manage to make a metallic chalky and obviously i like being fair to affordable makeup like i love the makeup revolution palettes that are just four pounds but this was just so bad the palette just was like the worst thing I've ever tried. On to some more palettes that I've actually tried on my channel that I just don't use. So the first one is the Saharan palette by Juvia's Place. I don't feel like this is a palette that I can use on the daily. They are highly pigmented. Me being pasty, I just feel like they're not very wearable for me in a way. Like if I want to do a look in particular, and I want to use one of these shades, then yes. It doesn't have enough transitions in there for me. The shimmers in this are to die for. Like, the formula is so good. The actual product itself is, like, amazing. Oh my god, those shimmers. Like, uh, uh, oh my god. But yeah, I just don't find myself reaching for that one at all. We have an Anastasia palette here. And again, it's pretty much the same reason. Pretty much everyone knows the formulation of the Anastasia shadows. They're very fluffy. You get a lot of pigment on the brush. But again, these shades just aren't very wearable for me. So that is why this is in this video. I feel like I'd benefit more from like soft glam. Yeah, I just don't use this one at all. But the final kicker, okay, is this one by Huda Beauty. The rose gold palette, the original palette that I bought just before she remastered it. And again, it's the same situation. The shades are just very dark. Unless I want to go for a really intense eye look, I'm not going to gravitate towards this. And usually I just like going for this kind of like airy fairy look by here. 
Not a fault of the product, just the shades just aren't for me. However, I am today wearing a Huda Beauty palette on my eyes. I'm wearing the Nude palette, which is so much better for my skin tone. So if you're very pale and you think you want to try some Huda eyeshadows, but not sure which one to go for, go for the Nude palette because there's a few more shades in this that I really like using. I also did this whole eye look with one brush. Let me know if you would want to see a video on that by giving me a thumbs up. Anyway, we're on the home stretch now. We've just got a few more products to go through. So let's quickly jump in. I had my hopes set so high for this little product right here. It's the Wet n Wild Glitter Single in Nude Comer. <laughs> and honestly, the way these look online, they look insane. They look like they're going to be kind of a pressed glitter. Do not be fooled. It has like a top layer when you first get it, but when you actually use it underneath, it's just like a cream, but there's like no glitter in it apart from that top layer. It's very sticky, very tacky. It feels heavy on the eyelid. Do not bother getting these. It's so sticky. Oh my god. Mascaras that didn't work for me. This one by Revlon. The volume is in. Had no volume. Don't know what they're talking about. Goodbye. The Kiko Mascara Top Coat. Why is this even a thing? Goodbye. Literally did nothing for my lashes. Eyelure Blend and Care. It was advertised as a way to blend your eyelashes together in a better way. Spoiler alert. It's just a normal ass mascara with a really tiny wand that did nothing for your lashes so goodbye and then finally a recent one that i tried the worth the hype mascara from nyx Ugh, this was just so just disappointed wand looks beefy it looked like a pretty thick formula but it just did nothing and uh yeah it was not worth the hype that's like the third time i've made that joke and i just gotta I've got to stop. I also have some lip stuff by NYX. This is the lip lingerie and I did kind of like this. However, these have gone bad. Ugh. It, it smells of straight paint, but I haven't even had these in my collection that long. They've gone like super duper watery, but these are just being uh, thrown out. Oh my gosh, we are finally at the end of the video. <laughs> I've been sitting here for over an hour doing this, so God help me when it comes to editing. <sighs> there we have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Obviously, I try out so many products on my channel. I think it's really important to recap. I really need to go through the things that I'm still using and what I'm not using. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and that it helped you in some sort of way with picking the products that you may have been curious about. I hope you take the time out of your day just to subscribe to my channel so you'll see any future videos like this. I am going to be doing a similar video to this, but about the products that I've loved from my review and things that I continue to use and staples that I found. So if you do want to get updated with that video, don't forget to hit the little subscribe button and the little bell button next to it. If you do enjoy these kind of recap videos, then don't forget to leave a little thumbs up on the video. That would really help me out a lot. But yeah, I hope you're having a wonderful day, night, bubble bath, whatever you're doing. And yeah, I hope you tune in for the next one. Till then, bye guys. The month of February is actually... Oh. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. Why did I just clap my hands? Like I'm happy and I know it. Oh, we need a little bit of highlight up in here. Let's just uh, try this one out because it's a fail. Ooh. Ooh, maybe this would be good for a body highlight. My arm is like twitching. That was rude. I'll, I'll link any, I'll link it. So I feel like, so I feel like because of that, it really, so be, oh my god, I cannot speak. Do you hate it when you've got like an itch on your face but you have a full face of makeup? Go away. Oh my gosh, there's no need for that. I keep having bloody itches on my face and it's not cool. Like my arm keeps twitching and it's annoying me so much. I think it's because I went to the gym and it's just like, don't do that to me again. <laughs> It just keeps twitching. Like, stop it. I know you're hurting. I know you're hurting. Me too. On the inside. This is the bone this way. This is the bone this way. I, uh, this is the bone the way. Oh my god. Bone to be wild. <sighs> Let me just stop with the twitching. Oh my god. This is the W7 Light 